Welcome to the latest update for Aussie Render. In this video we'll be exploring all the exciting new features and improvements that have been added over the last six months. These include the project select screen, new audio effects and a volume visualizer. When you open Aussie Render, you'll be greeted by the project select screen. This allows you to quickly access any recent projects by clicking on them in the list on the left, or open a new project by clicking Open Existing Project. If you're new to Aussie Render, you can start a new project with the Start New Project button. To prevent any sudden loud noises, you can check the Start Muted option to set the volume to zero when you start a new project. This setting will be saved when you reopen Aussie Render, so don't worry about having to click it every single time. On the right side of the screen, you'll find a change log for all previous versions of Aussie Render. This lets you see what's been added in the latest version, for example, adding a message when there's a new version of Aussie Render available. Let's start a new project, but let's first make sure to tick the Start Muted checkbox at the bottom. This will bring us to the main interface, which looks mostly the same, except now the window can be resized freely. You'll also notice that almost all effects can now be animated using the animation dropdowns. We've also added a few new effects to play with. The first new effect is the 3D perspective effect. This lets you treat the image generated by Aussie Render as a 3D object, allowing you to rotate it in 3D space. You can also control the depth of the image and program your own audio effects using Lua. Give it a try with the Modify Depth Function button. This opens a window that looks very similar to the one when you're editing a Lua file. With this, I could vary the depth as the X position changes allowing me to have a sort of wave effect when I rotate the image. Next up is the delay effect, which plays back the audio at a configurable number of seconds later, with a strength that you can adjust using the echo decay slider. Finally, the bulge effect adds a bulge to the image around the centre. You can change the range of the bulge to negative to get an inverse bulge. I've also made it possible to fix the rotation axis of any 3D rotation effect. This means that when you increase the rotation speed, it will only affect axes that do not have a fixed rotation axis, allowing you to move an axis independent of others whilst rotating. You might notice that there's a microphone next to the Choose File button. This can be clicked to use your microphone as an audio source, allowing you to apply effects to your voice or another application. You can change the microphone used by going to audio and then audio input device and then choose the one that you want. This also changes the microphone used when you click this and it alters the slider's value. The volume slider that used to be a part of the audio effects now has its own dedicated spot on the right hand side of the main interface. It also has a visualizer for the current volume with black bars showing the average volume over a small period of time. You can limit the maximum allowed volume by adjusting the clipping point on the right hand side of the slider. I've made a few improvements to text file rendering as well. For example, you can now render any font you have installed by clicking view and then text file font to choose the font. You can also make the text italic or bold using the text file font style dropdown. 
When you create a text file, you can specify the font size for each line by writing dollar font underscore size equals followed by the size of the font. For example, if I wrote dollar font underscore size equals 50, then for the remainder of that line, the font size would be 50. The default font size is 100, so if I set it to 50, then it's going to be half the size of all the other lines. For a sneak peek of what I'm working on next, have a look at this. Patchable is my new project that I'll be integrating with OssiRender that allows you to make sounds with visual programming. This is similar to Pure Data or Max MSP, but is being designed from scratch with simplicity first and foremost. That's all for this update. As always, reach out if there are any bugs or features you'd like to see next, and I'd love to see what you get up with with some of these new features. Thanks.